Are, are you adverse to some markets more than others? Do, does a market have to be liquid, fairly liquid, in, in order for you to be uh, comfortable entering that market? Um, do they, does it need to be liberal uh, or liberalized in, in a way? You certainly want the regulation to be on your side and to be, you, know, you want to know how the regulator thinks, if you possibly can. So difficult regulation or ad hoc changes or sudden shifts, and I think you know, in the past Korea has done some of those sudden shifts, which are a bit awkward to invest around sometimes. That, that's more difficult. But you tend to find the stocks are priced for that. So you need to make a decision on whether things are gradually improving or not from whatever base you're starting from. Yeah, whether or not you have a position in a certain in in institution worldwide, coming out of the global crisis, um, give us a sense of the kind of institutions you like and maybe even name a few that, um, that you, you find interesting because they're doing good things mm -hmm. at the moment. Tell you what, it tends to be the more sophisticated end in a given market. I mentioned CM Commercial Bank because I think that's at the, top or at the upper end in, in, in Thailand. CIMB, I think, has a fighting chance in Malaysia to become not just um, an investment bank for Malaysia, but perhaps the region, I, you know, maybe not, but they're doing a very good job. Um, other places, we have um, quite a big commitment to Standard Bank in South Africa. South Africa yes. you know, of course, we tend to go for the quality end because if you're a long-term investor, you want to know that you're not just, you know, buying an overnight phenomenon, you're buying a, a development strategy which is going to take years to, to, to break, to come to fruition. The magic really is the retail side. I think of, um, of how a bank really makes its money. I just think of my mum. I just think well, what sort of things does a conservative, you know, not very um, informed person do at the retail end for their money? And that's where the bank really makes its fortune. So of you and me. It's funny it's funny that you say that because that was the that was the flavor of the season for many years, uh, you know, after the Asian crisis. Mm. Uh, and today, in fact, if you look at results this season, like mm. in the last two quarters, mm. retail has been punished a lot. And, mm. and the banks that are holding out are holding out more because of capital markets. I, I agree mm. with you mm. on the retail fund. I mean, because we. But we're long term. You're talking about a couple of quarters, and you're completely right. But if you're looking at the development of a, of a financial institution, and, and you know, they're really. What, what does a company get out of bed in the morning for? It's to create economic goodwill. And that's what you're doing through the retail do you, side. Do you think anything at all about small business as a, as a category of business mm. for banks? Sure. If the bank does, I do. Okay. Yeah. But do you have any thoughts on that? It's like tough. In emerging markets, it's, it's, it's a really underserved area. I mean, if you look at, I don't know, um, any bank, I can almost think of no bank that has a really strong franchise in at least a, the, mm. the kind of specialized lender that you'd get in a, in a developed market. Mm -hmm. it's, that's, that's the area where if, you, if you've got a really efficient financial system, that's where money would flow. What do you see happening in emerging markets as an investable you know, um, asset class going forward from the global economic crisis? Um, you know, what are some of the issues that, that you face in uh, analyzing um, emerging market corporates in general? Let's look at it from the investor's point of view, and I'm going to contrast what's happening now with what happened after the Asian crisis, when okay. a, a lot of our clients, and about 60%, 65% of our assets are US, a lot of the clients redesignated some of their money into global. They didn't really believe in emerging markets and asset class, and that's changed. Mm. Now there is dedicated money, and it's very sticky in emerging markets, which is good. That's mm. one thing to, to bear in mind. Uh, for, for us, we, we went into this um, crisis, I would say unprepared, we didn't expect back in September that emerging markets would be so badly affected for all the reasons that we had, had done all the work on to say, well, there's structural growth and there's maybe some cyclical downturn coming, but the structural growth is intact or, or, or at least fairly solid. Six months later, it turns out that that analysis c was correct, but the depth of the, of the, of the you know, the dip was, was so deep because we, um, we had a a, a very um, inter interrelated or integrated financial system. Would you separate uh, emerging markets that have a domestic economy and those that were essentially export oriented? Yes, but 
some of the comp some of the countries, let's say like Malaysia, um, that has both and possibly leans more towards the export sector. There are there are other ways of looking at it, and the, the domestic economy is picking up quite well. I think we detected and hoped, I suppose, in about early June, end of May, that that was happening. I think that, that's that's coming to pass now. Right. So the export sector is very very important, but it's not the only thing. And Malaysia is a very diversified economy; has other other things going on. Thank you very much, Catherine. Thank you for spending time with us today.